You are listening to Slightly Warped, the podcast that tackles topics with a unique perspective. Here's your wild card, Richard Kearney, and your whimsical, Ryan Pulley. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick. That's Big Show. And we are here to give you our unique points of view week to week, topic to topic. And on this podcast, if you're uh, familiar with these last couple of weeks, we've been talking uh, a lot of football culminating up to the uh, Super Bowl. So in our uh, last podcast of the 2022 football season, we're we're going to talk uh, about the game itself, uh, what we liked, what we didn't like, the commercials, what we liked, what we didn't like, and uh, maybe just some overall uh, commentary on uh, things around the game that we saw. Show, how you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good, brother. How about those Chiefs? Congratulations are in order, my brother, and. Uh, Welcome to the three-time champion zone. Uh, it's about time you got here. Took you 50 some yep. odd years, but you made it. This now, is true. We would have and the I best have... division in football if San Diego, excuse me, Los Angeles, whoever they are, would just win one. Yeah, I suspect, though, that we won't be sitting here in this room very long, very much longer. So just enjoy our company while we're here. We'll send you a postcard once we move on. Okay. Do what you got to do, man. I mean, I'm happy with mine. I, I, it's better than the goose egg. Uh, True that. We, I'll, I'll take these lean years. Everybody goes through some lean years. You know, so that's going to happen. Um, ask Dallas. What's right. That meme going around talking about Rihanna's baby done been to the Super Bowl. <laughs> and Dallas, man. Yep. And it could be worse. You could be, uh, who are the winless teams besides the Chargers? Uh the Detroit. Lions, yeah, the Browns, Detroit. and I'm missing one. I think. Oh, I'm the missing Browns. A have, the Browns have won NFL championships, just not Super Bowls. Not since the merger. No. Right. Um. Let's see here. The Bills haven't haven't won any. Oh, that's right. That's right. They went four times straight and lost all four. That Chargers won haven't won them. any. Um. Wow, that's a tough one here. I, I know Hold there's on. a couple more. The Panthers haven't won one. Yeah, or Jags, you know. Jags, let's yeah. See. Expansion team, so I'll forgive them. Even Texans. though expansion was 95. Tennessee hasn't won any. Mm, that's right. Even as the Houston Oilers, they didn't win. Falcons haven't won any. Cardinals haven't won any. The Cardinals won a championship also before the merger. Uh, but no Super be Bowl, them right? The Bears get back. No, no Super Bowl. Yeah, so I can't. What? Uh, well, the Bengals haven't won any either. That's right. So we're looking at nine teams so far, and we ain't really dug deep. It was on Fox, uh, and we never talked about it before. What's your take on Fox's sports in general and their broadcast team, the pregame, the postgame, and the announcers? I like their their pregame stuff with Bradshaw and all them guys. I think they're kind of funny. Um, and they're they're the longest tenured one, aren't they? Seventeen years, I believe. You know, with all and that's the, just with, with Kurt Menifee and everybody, and yeah. Howie Long and all them. Yeah, Michael Strahan is the shortest tenured one. They're fifteen years. Yeah, everybody it, really? else has been it's... there longer than. That. Yeah, he has Strahan. not been on there for fifteen years. That's what he said. When did he retire? Remember, he retired after the Giants won the first Super Bowl against the Patriots, not the second one. O.C. Humanura took his spot. Wow. I didn't realize it was that long ago because that was 07, right? Wow. Um, well, if this is 2023, it would have had to been, yeah. Wow. I didn't realize it. I didn't realize he's been out of the game that long. 
Thing is, if you look at him and Howie Long, they look like they can still play. Yeah, I mean, Howie Long, well, he retired in 90-something. 90, 90. I don't even remember the date. It was 90-something, I know, but. Yeah, it was it was before Y two K. I know that. But, uh, yeah, wow, and I didn't realize that. His sons are as big as houses, and they played in the league. So, and they're and they're both gone too from the league. They don't play no more, do they? I think one of them's still in the league. I think Kyle has retired. Gotcha. I think Chris is still playing. I well, might have that part, backwards. I, I tell you, I missed Aikman and Buck. And Buck? Until you mentioned it, I never even gave it a second thought. I didn't mind Olsen and um, who was the uh, play-by-play? Exactly. You can't remember his name. <laughs> that's, my, that's my point right there. I, well, Olsen, I can't stand. I just cannot stand him. He just, he's almost as bad as Tony Romo when it comes to bias. Mm, I, I I don't think as bad. I don't think he's anywhere close. I said almost. I said almost as bad. They're in the same ballpark. Here's the thing. Count your lucky stars that Fox got the broadcast this year. Because you know who's going to be in the broadcast booth next year. Who's that? Brady. Mm, now, he said he's taking a year off before he, he's going to join in the 2024 season. Mm. And he'll be on Fox, right? I know. Yeah. So he won't be in the booth next year. Good. That's a year without having to hear him. Well, they'll put it the next year. It'll be with CBS or NBC. They alternate. Yeah. So Fox won't get it until Super Bowl sixty. Yeah, Super Bowl sixty, because they had it in Super Bowl fifty four. That's right. That's right. So I mean, I I don't really pay attention. I wish there was a way to watch it and stream the the hometown radio version through my television but i haven't figured that out yet well the thing about the super bowl is you won't get the hometown announcers for that and you're just gonna i'm get... sure you can if i could get somehow get the odyssey app to work while the tv is running and be able to p- turn this one off and yeah because you know they're local yeah, you, you figure that out you let me know right that would be good so concluding with the broadcasting like I said, I didn't have a real problem with um, Olsen. I, I didn't have a problem with any of them, but I got a kick out of uh, Jimmy Johnson. I, I think he was drinking. He had to be. Dancing? Yeah. He, he was having a good time up there. I mean, I yeah. would too. It's the Super Bowl. Heck yeah. And and I'll go back and say I didn't really have a big problem with the guys. I just, I, I, could, I could actually turn the volume off and be okay. Yeah, I never really have a problem with the play-by-play guys ever. Um, I know a lot of us don't like Romo, but I don't have a problem with Nance either. I like Jim Nance. Yeah. And, now and they ain't no, know, they're no Madden or Somer all, but there, there never will be. There never will be. I mean, or, the only thing that can touch that would have been Meredith and Cosell. But you got to go back a ways to get that. Al Michaels and. Uh... The dude that stayed with NBC. Chris Collinsworth? Uh, yeah, they were a good duo. Yeah, they were, but the true mark of a good duo is I didn't really miss Al Michaels. Uh, dude from ESPN stepped in just fine. And again, I don't yeah. remember dude's name, so I'm going to get crucified in the he, comments on here. He did so well. <laughs> you don't even remember <laughs> That's actually the mark of a good play-by-play to me. I don't need to know who you are. If I hear you and everything's going fine, we're good. The color analyst is who makes the duo. It really is. So so you're right. Madden Summerall. Madden was the best color analyst there was. Yeah, he was pretty dope. All right. So do you want to talk commercials or halftime show first? Uh, whichever you want. All right, let's go. Let's go with the halftime show because I liked it. What are you? What is your take on on Rihanna? I was entertained. I've um, seen a lot of negativity online lately, though. 
Yeah, I, I think because they were expecting the old school Rihanna, you know. Um but she's a different she's a different person now than she was five, six, seven years ago. Um, I did see a lot of body shaming stuff on on there about her too. I, I think she's you, pregnant. She, yeah. Yeah, she's you know. pregnant. I mean, my God. I mean, why would people shame her on that? I mean because this is America. Where I guess people were expecting to see nothing but skin. And, and a right. lot of people that I was reading and were expecting smut. extra guests and stuff like that. And and I think this was a welcome change. I don't need to see yeah. Rihanna and 10 other people on stage trying to sing their songs. No, I actually, I was actually very entertained. And I like Rihanna anyway. I'm a fan. So, I mean, she could have just sat in a chair and saying I'd have been okay. Yeah. I mean. I thought the stage thing was pretty cool with them going up and down. And I thought that was a. That was different, something we haven't seen before. That's true. Yeah, I mean, she sang all her hits. She got, what, uh, 13 songs in or something like that? Yeah. 12 songs in 13 minutes, something like that. You can't ask for more. I mean, I didn't want to see extra guests. We've done that to death. We've done the boom pal light shows and things floating and all the gimmicks to death. We got one good halftime show with just a straight entertainment. Now, yep. I will make one concession to that that I've seen online, that somebody did make a great point. When was the last time we got a good, just straight rock act? I love all kinds of music. Shameless plug. Watch Real On, Real and Review on YouTube. But they make a good point. Uh, a lot of people were pushing for like Metallica or whatever. I don't know if they would do a Super Bowl or if the NFL would approach them about it, but it's not a didn't, bad idea. Didn't Aerosmith do it a few years ago? They did. I don't know how far back it was, but it would it would have had to been pretty far back. And I was just looking at. Uh, I don't even know if it's still on there. Somebody posted the top uh, 10, I believe it was, Super I guess Bowl the, uh, halftime shows. The Rolling Stones was the last rock group, and that was in 2006. Oh, wow. It's been that long, huh? I guess I according, can understand that. According to my little quick uh, quick search here. Now, before I finish talking about the halftime show, I want to talk about Billboard ranked these uh, 13 best, 13 best halftime shows. I don't agree with this entire order. I'll go from number one down. Number one is Prince. That was a damn good halftime show. I remember that. Uh, two is U2. Three was Dr. Dre, Eminem, Snoop Dogg, Mary J. Blige, and Kendrick Lamar. Four was Madonna. I forgot she did a halftime show. Five was Bruce Springsteen. Don't understand that. Six was Beyonce. Seven was the Rolling Stones. Eight was Lady Gaga. Nine was Paul McCartney. Ten, Michael Jackson. I have a problem with that right there. How are these eight people ahead of him? I get the Prince one. but the uh, What other list eight, did you get that off of? It's a billboard rank them. Number 11 was Katy Perry. Number 12 was Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake. That one y'all know should have been hired just because. And number 13 was Coldplay, Beyonce, and Bruno Mars. Now, they didn't even put Jennifer Lopez and Shakira in there. And I think that was a damn good halftime show from a couple of years back. See, I just happened to Google when I looked it up and it said the top 15. Uh, and look how different this list is. Number mm -hmm. one, Prince. All right. Number two, Michael Jackson. That's what I expected. Number three, Beyonce and Destiny's Child. Number four, the Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Eminem collab. Number five was this past one the other day, Rihanna. Number six, Janet Jackson. Seven, Katy Perry. Eight, mm -hmm. Madonna. Nine, The Weeknd. 
10 Bruno Mars, mm -hmm. 11 U2, mm -hmm. 12 Lopez and Shakira, mm -hmm. 13 Maroon 5, 14 Lady Gaga, 15 The Rolling Stones. Okay. Whose list is that? Because I like that list better. It is NBC Sports. Their okay, list. Okay, so Billboard, who's known for music, NBC Sports, who's known for sports. NBC Sports got it right. Billboard didn't. That's all I'm going to say about that. Yes, sir. All right. Let's get to the fun stuff. How'd you like them commercials? Love them, hate them, kinda... indifferent. I thought they kind of blew with the exception of maybe a couple. I think the best one was that damn Tubi commercial. I'm sure oh, there were a man. lot of people that lost their mind. I, I immediately looked at where's the remote. <laughs> but then once I realized it was nowhere close to my hands, I looked back up just to make sure. Because I knew I wasn't going to miss nothing if I waited a few extra seconds. Right. But well, when it started doing me. it. Both my kids looked at me and I'm like, it's a commercial, guys. Calm down. I knew immediately what they were doing, but it's still, I could see everybody going, what the heck are you doing? I think you were part of the 1% that got it. The rest of us were like, where's the remote? Who's sitting on well, it? Well, I, I knew since I didn't that the remote wasn't, I mean, the remote was next to me and nobody was touching it. I knew that it had to be a commercial, but. I, the one thing too, and I'm not trying to be funny, but Jesus had had a really big uh, commercial um, money pocket, I guess, because he had quite a few commercials on there during the Super Bowl. I want to talk about that real quick before we go to the other commercials, because for whatever reason, that's gotten a lot of backlash, and I don't know why. I mean, I do know why they've said why the people, the haters, but. I guess their logic, all the haters were, if you spend 5, 10, 15, 20 million on these ads, couldn't you give that to the poor, give that to this, give that to that? You could reach thousands, if not millions of people. I get that. But I also get that if you really think of it in terms of finances, even though that's money spent on a commercial or several commercials in this case, you could reach billions because what was it a hundred and some odd million watched the Super Bowl? Yeah. I mean, that's just a simple math. They said if they took their 20 or 30 million dollar budget and put that towards feeding the homeless, that'd be great. But if every 113 million people watched that show, donated one dollar, they would have generated 113 million dollars instead of mm -hmm. the 20 or 30. Simple math. I I I think the unfortunate thing in today's society is people don't want religion shoved down their throat type of thing yeah. you know um but we get so much other crap you know the you know and i don't mean to tick anybody off but you know the lgbt community shoving their stuff the he you know what's my yeah. pronoun crap you know that type of stuff getting shoved down our throats i mean what's the difference in i, my I have i have no problem with that, those commercials, the entire series all year of those commercials, because they made a point. They they made a perfect point too, which is more than they I can say for most commercials that came on during the yes. Super Bowl. Yes. And I think it's money well spent. If you got it and that's what you want to do, use it because I understand the end game. And if if and I hate to speak bad of most Christians, but if you are a true Christian, like the ad says, Jesus gets us. So, you know, Jesus wouldn't have spent $20 million on a commercial. You don't know that. You don't know that. Jesus might have spent $40 million. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Um, the movie I just was I really just wasn't impressed with any of the commercials for the most part you didn't like the movie previews i like i mean yeah don't get me wrong i liked them but i just i think overall this was one of the weakest years for commercials i believe so too i mean nothing really stood out and said wow that was the best commercial not not any of them um 
it seems like the rates for these commercials go further and further up and the quality goes further and further down. Yep. I agree. Okay, kids. Uh, we are uh, joined by the first part of the dynamic duo of Nelson and Kevin. This would be Kevin. I uh, don't know if Nelson's going to show up. I mean, I'd have a better chance of him showing up if Philly had won, but we're just going to keep that under wraps. Kevin, welcome back to the show. What's going on? What's good? You tell me, man. Uh, like I was uh, telling Big Show, congratulations. Chiefs won. Welcome to the three-time Super Bowl champion club. There you go, um, trying to stay relevant. It ain't about my team. There, There's half a dozen teams that have won three. You know, mm -hmm. it took y'all 50-some-odd years to get here, but that's cool. It's like I tell you all the time. In today's sports world, no one cares about what you did before. Back then, they care about what you did now. So, people don't even remember wars probably the past 10 years at best. They probably don't. I mean, like I said to you, um, it's only for the hardcore fans. You know, the average Joe, yeah, I get you there because they don't know. And then if they're the average Joe, more than likely, they're a bandwagon fan. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of them at the parade tomorrow. Let's just hope nobody gets liquored up and climb a tree. I want that to happen. That's what you call oh. a mass entertainment. It's going to happen. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> watch, it, watch it be the same dude, too. Hey. Uh -huh. even funny. Then but it becomes a tradition. Kind of, I'm still kind of, you know, I ain't even floating high. You know, it's just, I ain't trying to be cocky. And it was a win that should have happened. You know, I'm thankful it's my daughter's birthday, so I stayed at home for the game. I didn't go to the festivities at Westport and Power and Light in the Plaza because it was people everywhere. But far as the game itself, we had a perfect second half. The first half, they spent all of that time. We was on the bench, only amounted to a 10-point lead. I was worried Mahomes got, got hurt. I told several people, if he don't come back, we're screwed. Love Chad Henney. Off until the Suns have retired with two rings. Love him. But there's no way he was going to win. I, and I get that, but I'm I'm going to be honest. As close as that game was, it was in the Chiefs' favor. You know, even though I thought it was going to be a close game, I think I said 27-24. When Philly had 27 points and Kansas City starts scoring, I'm like, this is Kansas City's game right here. And, and like you said, there was a, min a, a minute of doubt when they showed that picture of Mahomes uh, in pain on the bench. Oh, he still, but, he was hurt. He still hurt. He was, I guarantee oh yeah. when he got at the parade tomorrow at Disneyland doing all the different stuff, I'm pretty sure he probably got an air boot on because I know that ankle is messed up. But I give him his props, whether it was going to be on one leg, no legs, whatever, he was going to win that game. And when he made that run, I knew it was over. You know, forget about the pass interference call, the holding, whatever it is. Forget about that. When Mahomes made that run, what was it, 12 yards, 15 yards, something like that? 25 yards. Get it right. No, it was 26, actually. Longest run by quarterback in Super Bowl history. But, you know, we don't care about those things. We just want the win. Okay. It doesn't matter then since you don't care about it. Nope. it when he did it, I knew that – the game was over at that point. And whether you believe it or not, Kansas City is more of a comeback team because they, they're they like that seasoned fighter that, you know, will just stay in the boxing match, just figure you out, and then once they figure you out, they got you where they want you. I mean, look at the last Super Bowl against the 49ers. They did the same thing. Oh, we're down 10 points? No biggie. Let me just make this halftime adjustment and we'll handle it. Honestly, and this may be a reach, I'll tell me if it is, I think it's kind of a Midwest Kansas City thing. So if you think about when the Royals had their three, four-year run, how many games were they losing like eight to two then they ended up winning like 12 to eight? It's just yeah. the – was it? I forgot the name of the Royals coach when they had their run. 
he had embedded them that they never gave up. And Andy's the same way. Andy has that same mindset, and he has them to where they don't give up. They feel like they still got a chance regardless who's out there. I was like, the MVP of the game, though, is Brett Beach. Anybody who knows football knows we lost to Tampa because Brett didn't give us backup line. He fixed that problem. He retooled it. I saw yesterday on Facebook, the greatest thing I saw, and I didn't think about it. Everybody was breaking their neck for OBJ. He signs with nobody. Brett Beach in his offense, and his offense looking at Tony, who was so far on the bench with the, uh, the Giants, you thought he was a Jet. Made that trade for, what is it, compensatory picks in this year's draft, third and sixth round, that probably would have not made the team. And we got a first rounder on a rookie contract. They got a touchdown, got a big punt return, and that put everything in motion for the game was done. Yeah, I'll say they wanted to draft Tony last year. But, you know, we picked 32, so or 31, and he was gone by the time we got there, so we picked CEH, but yeah, that 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 was a that was a great deal. Now, did he get on the field Sunday? Who? Tony? Edwards Hilaire? No, Edwards no, Hilaire. He was, no, Tony he was. was on the field. He was a healthy Edwards scratch. Hilaire was in street clothes. Okay. Yeah, he was well, a healthy scratch. Well, like we've been talking about all year show, you didn't need him because uh, what's his name? That kid that just Pacheco. runs hard? Pacheco, yes, thank you. Pacheco. That dude, is, he's a beast. Seventh round pick from Rutgers. There's one who, thing that teams who knew need Rutgers to had anything like that. But here's the thing, though. Being that I think every GM, you need to have someone that's worked their way up. Veach was player personnel. He was head scout for college to where he knows how to pick a player. So it's like he's, I wouldn't say he specialized, but he's probably batting 85, 90% on his draft picks. To where they pan out. Edwards Hilaire, I think, would have panned out if he could have stayed healthy. He was much better this year once he slimmed down, but he just can't stay healthy. Outside of that, all his picks have pretty much worked. All his moves have worked. So it just, I can't wait to see what he does this offseason because we got a lot of players that's about to be out there. It's going to be a lot of one year deals given, maybe a franchise tag. It's going to be interesting how he moves it, but he knows how to keep the pieces together because, I mean, you outside of you being a Raiders fan, you can't deny this run that they've been on. Oh, no, no. I give you props. Even Alex Smith there the year before when we had that BS loss. You can't deny the run that he's had the team on. I mean, ever since Andy's been there, that whole thing with the GM, the coach, I mean, that's why it's a head-scratcher that Eric Bieniemy is not even looked at for a coaching position because y'all got all the pieces not there. At. Until, and no offense, Big Show, until the enemy walks in as a white guy, it's not going to happen. It's just Shannon Sharp said it yesterday perfectly. They said, if you're not play calling, you can't get the job. Then he named all these coaches that got hired that was offensive coordinator that wasn't play calling. Then he said, oh, well, you need NFL coaching experience. Then he named all these coaches that got hired that came from college. And what's the one factor in all of them? They were white. The enemy and Leftwich both have hardware in the past four years. And neither one of their phones is ringing for a head coaching job. Allegedly, Leftwich was offered the Jacksonville job, but it was figurehead. They told him, you the head coach but you got to keep the staff. How is that a head coach if you can't make your changes? And that's when Leftwich turned it down and went back to Tampa and got a ring with Tampa because he had the option to take that job. Smart move. So it's like until they feel like, <laughs> and again, this is this old NFL, until they feel like we can be on the same level, Mary said we couldn't play quarterback. They would let us play quarterback as long as you was a black guy as a quarterback, you was a running back, receiver, or you was us uh, in the secondary. Until they realize offensive coordinators can be black and we can make good calls, 
it's just not going to happen. Well, if you're a defensive coordinator, you can get jobs until you're blue in the face damn near. But I guarantee if Eric Bannon was a white guy, he could pick whatever job he wanted with no running with what he did with Andy. Well, let me go back to what you're saying. If you're a defensive coordinator, there's jobs out there. Do you think Spags would get a look? Before the uh, enemy, yes. Yeah, he'll get one before the enemy, yes, yes. I also think the enemy's problem, too, is that he's the next running back coach. I, I think that's part of the problem, too. Hmm. His position, his position coach. But that's the thing, though. He's so far removed from that, that doesn't matter. No, he's not. He's not so far removed from that. He he's a running back. That's inbred in him. That ain't coming out of his blood. That may be I true. Think that's, been I just think that's how people look at him. Years, that, but has he been the full offensive coordinator? Let's be honest. Has he been the full offensive coordinator? You're never going to be full offensive coordinator under Andy Reid. But yet Doug Peterson and Nagy have both gotten jobs. I agree. I'm not and debating they didn't that have at all. So one of things where it's like. He would have to literally, and it's, it sucks to say, either take the Dion route and go college or go to another team and produce the same amount of just stats and then maybe be considered. Because the one thing I noticed after the Super Bowl, everybody was Andy Reid and, and the enemy did a great job. It was never the enemy did a great job. But, like, when you watch other teams' highlights, it's automatic. They say the offensive coordinator, they don't mention the head coach. Like when Dallas just fired their offensive coordinator, first thing I saw is he stands a chance to get a head coaching job if he wants one. Arizona's coach, he's he got fired. He had he didn't have close to a winning season in Arizona, but yet he still mm-hmm. had the opportunity to get a job as a head coach because of what he did at Texas Tech. And at Texas Tech, he was trash. So the only thing is where it's just you, you can't ignore the elephant in the room, but it's going to get ignored because your wallet ain't as big as theirs to force the issue. So we're going to keep getting True. BS Rooney Rule interviews, and that's going to be the end of it. Nothing more, nothing less. So, but are you saying fire, that – are you, me up. But are you saying that the only reason why he's not a head coach is because he's black? The writing's on the wall for that. You can't deny a Super Bowl ring, and now he got two rings, and there was no one calling him outside of an offensive coordinator position. I'm I'm not debating his 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 accolades. That's not what I'm debating. But the man has had how many interviews? This year he got just offensive coordinator er- interviews. I'm not asking about this year. How many interviews has he had in the last three or four years? 17. Right. Is there a possibility he just might interview bad? Oh, that's without a doubt he probably does, but don't act like all of them other ones interview perfectly. I didn't say that. We're no, just no, talking I, I about being enemy. Make the statement that he may interview bad, but how I, many mother are probably assholes that don't have the stat line that he has? No, I completely agree. I completely agree. And I'm gonna say this because I'm sure you're gonna be a guest on here before. You don't ever have to say mm-hmm. apology about the white comment. I yeah. get it. All right, I'm not that type of white dude. All right, mm-hmm. I'm I'm just light skinned. You just don't understand. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you're lighter than me. Okay, <laughs> but no. It's so like, that, I get what but you, that being I, said, I don't want I don't want to paint it with a broad stroke that that's the only reason why he's not getting the job. Now I see. I think where you're that's a from that's show a because good. as a manager, when I was at the sporting goods store, we had people that came in all the time that. They had the qualifications, but there were things about them that threw up red flags. So no matter how good they can be at the job, if they suck as a person, that weighs into it. And I'm just, I'm not even writing the checks for these people. Now you're talking about owners of a football team who has to write million dollar checks. Do you want to risk that? with somebody that you think you're going to clash with in just a few months. Well, so I can see a, that. Here's the other black mark on EB that is just BS, but it goes back to the, my original statement. They're mentioning something he had no nothing to do with when he was like 07, when he was coaching at Colorado State, when the whole staff got fired 
for players that were doing allegedly uh how's the best way to put it? Things that shouldn't have been done with uh, other females, shall we say. And they mm. just wiped out the whole staff. How is it in 2020, some 13, 15 years later, it's still following him when him and everyone else got fired? It's not like he was, a hey, his fingerprints is on it. They got rid of the whole staff. Kind of like when this shit happened with Penn State when they got rid of when they got rid of Paterno and Sandusky or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like they just basically hit the whole staff with, with hey, we letting all y'all go. So it's like he's fighting that too. And it's like, how was all this stuff going against these people when we've seen other coaches that have been be more flawed than that, but still keep getting jobs? See, the thing is, yeah. it's like I I get it, but like everything around keeps pointing a different picture to where it points to where it's like, I'm not saying it's 100% race, but I'm going to put it at a 60 40, and I'll let you yeah, get, guess which one is a 60. Now, I'll let's be honest. This, there's some, there is some of that part. in there. Yeah. I mean, my goodness. And you know, it has to be because most of these owners have been around for a long time, and it's the quote unquote old boys club. Yeah, the good old boys. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you can get a dude off the street like Jeff Saturday to come coach your team as a head coach mm-hmm. who's never had any. I mean, it's obvious that yes, that type of stuff's out there. How many yeah. black coaches are 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 head coaches right now? Like what, three, four, or am, am I even tripping? Is there that many? Tomlin and Demar- Demi- uh, Demarco Ryan, D'Amico, D'Amico Ryan, D'Amico, D'Amico Ryan. That's right, because Lovey Smith got fired, didn't he? And that's and Todd Bowles. You, you fired oh, Todd Bowles. Defensive- Todd Bowles. Okay, so you got three, but you fired so a three. defensive coordinator yeah. to hire a defensive coordinator. How does that make sense? You fired a man didn't have no quarterback to bring in the defensive coordinator. You still have no quarterback. Yeah, I think the DeMarco Ryan thing, though, was he played there, so they yeah, wanted to give him a that shot, That was too. a PR move. Yeah. I thought they give him a legit, a legit chance. Being well, Houston, I doubt it. Yeah. Yeah, because Lovey Smith got that one year. That, that was it. I mean, yeah. you're on a short but leash lo- if you're in Houston. But Lovey Smith messed up, and he won his last game, which gave yeah. his old team he used to coach the number one seat, the number one pick in the draft. Yeah, he, he did a great thing because he knew he probably go get fired. So yeah, he just said, "Screw you, I'm gonna win this game." Yeah, but yeah. but sorry, we're back around to why I'm on here. You know, big show. I know you agree. It feels good to be a champion. It feels good. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm starting to get used to this. Yeah. I, you know, I can't wait till, as I told, you know, that that other guy, how, you know, next year, Super Bowl's in Arrowhead West, and I can't wait to to win it there. Because you got to admit, other guy, that would be the greatest troll if we never win the Super Bowl again, if we win it in your home stadium. That you would be disgusting. Admit. That would be very disgusting. And, and by the way, if you look in that little corner right there, it says Richard Kearney, not other guy. I, I, but, I can't, you know, we're talking about championships. I don't know who you are, you know. <laughs> yeah. Again, don't be like you say, focus on the present. Don't focus on the future then. That's why I focus on the present because we won. And you have. I think the last time you won, I think you had hair on top. I, I did. <laughs> but see, you know, back then, Big oh. Show probably was little show. It's, it's been, you know, <laughs> but I, I love you, my big bro. You know, I love you, but you know, right now, this, this is me and Big Show. And, and, show, and that's why I'm letting y'all have y'all's fun. You've we earned, can it. Have You've our earned it. It took you uh, 50 some odd years, but you earned it. Hey, it I tell you what, take, you know, I you tell know, you what, I really thoroughly enjoy about this victory. What's that? One is we, we won it like the Patriots have won theirs. Last second field goal as time runs off. I mean, how many Super Bowls did Brady win that way? Um, all Three. of them. You know, most of them. Well, except there were the no blowouts. Quarter. Sure, there was thirty-one to nine. He kicked our ass in his last Super Bowl. But um, I, I enjoyed that. That's that was how a, a championship team wins. They don't give the other team the other opportunity. The other thing that I really that I really think that it's poetic justice is what did they fire Andy Reid for in Philadelphia? His in-game adjustments and his poor clock management. 
How did he beat the Eagles? His in-game adjustment and his awesome clock management. I just thought that was phenomenal. I to me, that's poetic justice. That's yeah. what I really I love that part of it. And my favorite part is when they won, he said the Chiefs all-time winning record as a coach. Yes. So beating his former team to become number one overall with his current team. You you can't beat that. And this was supposed to be a bridge year. Mm-hmm. Was I it? Love how Tyreek oh, yeah. tweeted 15 and 87 greatest combo ever. How much humble pie has he been eating this week is my question. Oh yeah, quite a bit. He he's upset. He he's missing he's missing the party. He, and he's gonna yeah. miss the parade tomorrow. Oh, no, he can come sit next to he, me. He <laughs> as they drive by. <laughs> Listen, I, I I'm not even chief fan, and I said it all year. They're better without him. Yep. Oh yeah, they they uh was that uh addition by subtraction? Yeah. Because you're not looking for that big play all the time. You just and, see, and, and, and Andy's from that West Coast tree. Guys. Yeah. The, the, we're this, this, pretty with go ahead. This is what I'll say. You took away Tyree, you made him throw to everybody. You took away Adams. And Rodgers threw to nobody until the last like month, month and a half of the season. Young vet versus old vet. And but you give Adams to, to Carr and he loses his job. But that's another yeah, show. That's the thing, though. I what I will yeah. say about Carr, who I love how he did the, the Raiders in the end. Yes. I think yeah. because they made the move to get Adams for him. He felt he had to always get the ball to him. They ignored the fact that Renfro got hurt. They ignored the fact that that bum-ass tight end fantasy hurt right here, that he got hurt and was gone bulk of the year. Yeah. But Adam still had ridiculous numbers. He just didn't lead the league like they probably thought. Because the thing I think with a lot of these teams, when they pay a player, they want them to be the best they position for a dog and pony show. Be like, mm-hmm. hey, look, look, look at this player when it shouldn't be like that. But you know, it's, it's one of the things where right now I wish Nelson was here because I'll give Philly they, they credit their props. Philly has no one outside the 49ers, they get a quarterback to stop them if they replace them. The defensive coordinator and offensive coordinator are good since they just all both state coordinators. That's no reason I'm mad about the being me thing. Two guys who we've never heard of that have won nothing, both just got head coaching jobs before the Super Bowl, more than likely. That's where I was going yeah. next for Philadelphia. Do you think that hurts them then since they're losing both the offensive and the defensive coordinators? Yes. We're going to see how good their coach is if he has good replacements. Because the thing was, when Nagy left, when Peterson left, the enemy was there each time. If the enemy was to leave now, Nagy's there. So it's all about who's your next chain of command. And if the enemy moved up to head coach and Andy Roth to the sunset, Nagy's the, the offensive coordinator. It's all about how that tree keeps moving. And I'll be honest, though, and this will go to your to your uh, argument. What I've heard is that Nagy is going to be Andy's replacement. Andy is the head coach in the wings. Nagy mm. is. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised at all. I wouldn't because like that move, though. The enemy has been denied so much, I don't think anybody here even wants him to be head coach. Because, it's like you said, it's like, why? Why not? And it's been, yeah, they said he interviews bad, but the thing is, and this goes back, you know, because everything, unfortunately, comes back to race. And, you know, Richard will agree, we're not in those rooms. We wasn't raised in those rooms. A lot of these guys, they're third generation. How many times have we seen a Schottenheimer get a job and they've been trash, but they keep getting jobs or a hack it? And I'm just like, how does this keep happening? But that's just how this, the wheel goes until the owner decides, I want to do something different. That's one thing I give the NBA. NBA owner will come in, he'll trade away. We've seen it with Brooklyn, just as bad. <laughs> trade yeah. the whole damn team away and start over. NFL mm-hmm. owners don't do that. I don't know why. Yeah, there are but too many retread head coaches. Yeah, it just it's 
And that's one thing. And, that, and I will give Goodell credit when he was like, hey, y'all didn't fire too many coaches. You got over 100 million of coaches being paid that aren't on teams. So I give him credit on trying to slow that carousel down. You know, that's why he gets paid the money he does. Because for him, I think it is about the shield more than it is about the individual team. That's why him and Jerry don't get along. Bro. Him and uh, Mark don't get along. Yeah, I think if they do it like that, the owners should have to pay it out of their own pocket, not the NFL having to pay him. You know what I mean? That's to come out of their own kitty. They're yeah. going to fire a coach like that. No, I agree. All right. As we starting to wind it down, I got two more questions for y'all. Mm. Go around. Um, real talk. If Philly doesn't make it back, who do you think is going to represent the NFC next season? I'm just going to say off the defense because I know they got embarrassed. I'm going to give it to the 49ers. Because they have a serviceable quarterback, which they had in Purdy. Let's not act like Purdy was a first-round quarterback. They get an XFL quarterback like they had, they can still win. Show? Sure. Yeah, I'd probably say the Niners. I mean, the Cowboys are always going to be relevant. The Cowboys um, will be the Cowboys, so I'm not counting them. Yeah, they'll find a way to lose. I mean, that's what they thought about the Chiefs, too, and now look at us. So anything no, I, is possible. I, I couldn't see the Chiefs messing up the way Dallas did. I mean, well, the thing Dallas is, just we, crapped the we bed. Went, we went 23 years without winning a playoff game. Yeah. But the thing on that, my, my pushback on that, that's because Carl Peterson, Dorsey, and I forgot the other damn GM, Pioli. They have yeah. run a team. The owner wasn't involved in any type of way, shape, or form. On Dallas is the flip to where the owner is the GM and he's too involved. Oh, yeah, most yeah. definitely. I'm and, just and, saying and that's they're going to be relevant. That's yeah. why I take it in stride when y'all, you know, do all that shit, talk about the Raiders. Yeah, we didn't had, what, two playoff appearances in 22 years. I get that. But keep in mind, up until, what, 10 years ago, we didn't even have a GM. That was all Davis. So we're just now Wait, experiencing. No, I didn't know that. I didn't know that was that was all. Uh, David Al Davis was the GM. Once he passed away, Mark took over, and they hired I forget his name from Green Bay, and he was the GM. Then he got the dude from the NFL Network, and now we're on uh, the GM from the Patriots. And Mike Mayock was doing a good job. I think. I think Mayock was doing a good job as running day to day operations. He was draft. He wasn't. So, I didn't we'll see what Al did everything. We'll see what we have with the ass hat in place uh, on the coaching side. And real quick, because we only got a minute left, uh -huh. I know y'all pro Kansas City, but who's their main competition going into next season? Is it's it still Buffalo? Cincy. Is it Cincy? Cincy Buffalo was a joke. It's Cincy. Yeah, Cincinnati. I'll say we won A, they won B. I'm going to throw a curve. I'm going to say Jacksonville. Nah. That was a um, lightning in the bottle. won't happen again. Uh, they'll really? Be, they, they'll they be, got a cold defense now. They'll be all right. But they're not going to – They no. They're, no. They're not going to – They got to learn be, how to win. They're still young. True. Yeah. true. But Jacksonville, I will say – I will say this. Dark horse for next year. Watch out for Denver. I'm. I'm Sean Payton's going to make a difference. He's going to make Russ like Drew Brees. He's he's going to make a difference, and you know, Henny's retired. Why don't we just pick up Carr as our backup for Mahomes? That'd be awesome. Oh, wouldn't that be well, a slap that, in the though, face? That the means... <laughs> I uh, hey, I that. just remembered we got thirty seconds left. <laughs> show, okay. show, take us out of here. God <laughs> bless y'all. <laughs> Go Chiefs. <laughs> See y'all. Backup car for life. Later, Kevin. Hey, he's gonna be like his brother. <laughs> hey, his brother got a ring. His hey, brother got so a he, ring. He will too as a backup. Hey, before I pass out, you've been listening to the Slightly Warped podcast. And should I survive this, I'll see y'all next week. Like, share, and subscribe if you're on YouTube.